So, beautiful weather this morning. I'm probably wearing far too many clothes. I'm gonna have to change at some point. And I'm headed to the Grand Canyon. I wanted to share some things. Yesterday I finished my audiobook of uh, The Subtle Art of Not Giving a um, Leap. It's brilliant. It's another sort of self-help thing, but it's very realistic. And they, I mean, there's so much I could tell you about, but it's basically, which I've always known, or I, I know more now, that you are responsible for your own life. You have the choice to make a change and do whatever you want to make yourself as happy as you possibly can be. And I completely live by that, I hope. And um, just doing things like this makes me realize that it's my choice where I stay, it's my choice what I do, and, and that's a wonderful thing to do. And I know everyone can't necessarily do that all the time because if they have families and all of this stuff, but I think you, are, you probably can. If you, if you have any ideas of what you really want to do to make you happy or, I don't know, just change it up. It's up to you to make that change. And it's just good to remind yourself that you are in charge of your own life and your own destiny and your happiness. And um, I just wanted to share that with you all. So if you wanna make a change, just do it because it's worth it. You've got nothing to lose. And if it goes wrong, you do something else. Um, he was also talking about how important rejection is. Now. In my business, um, I've had a hell of a lot of rejection and obviously at the time, it's the worst thing in the world and you think your life is gonna fall apart. And then something else comes around and you learn so much from the rejection. So it's so, he was explaining how good those bad times are to be able to um, make a change and uh, appreciate when things do go your way. But it's all, it's all learning, you know? I think if people have an easy life, they're just like, how boring is that? I think you've got to have some serious lows to be able to pick yourself up and do something about it and, uh, and make a change in your life. So anyway, blah, 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 boring, 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 but that's, um, that's that for today. So yesterday I did 16,800 and something steps. Um, I know that doesn't really sound like much when some people are running 10 miles a day, uh, but for me, that was quite a lot. I've got like little blisters on the back of my feet, which is annoying, but um, oh, I'm just driving towards beautiful, more beautiful rock formations, but it's going to be a special day today because I'm going to the Grand Canyon. I'll show you how vast and uh, how alone I am on these roads. It's just road, just straight, straight, straight-ish, and then you'll suddenly see like a massive crater, um, or a canyon, I guess, uh, to the side of you, and it's just... Amazing. So I've just I've just got to the um, one of the entrances to the Grand Canyon National National Park. It says there's a moderate likelihood of fire, um, and we're I'm in a bit of a queue to pay to go in. But I just hope there's a toilet somewhere soon because I'm a little bit desperate, and I've been driving for quite a while now after a coffee, and there's been nothing for miles and miles and miles. So. Um, Fingers crossed. Okay, I'm so excited. So I've just parked um, just as soon as you get into the uh, the national park, and uh, luckily there were restrooms. So most importantly, that was uh, that was good. Um, and I'm just about to have a look at uh, the Grand Canyon for the first time. So I'm just walking up here. There's a there's a mm, what do you call it? A tower that you can walk up. It looks like so I'll be able to get a nice old view from up there. And um, I can see it. Oh my goodness, this is so exciting. Okay, this is my first view of the Grand Canyon, which is gorgeous. Oh my goodness, okay, here we go. Take 
just left the Grand Canyon South Rim. Um, it's fantastic, it's beautiful, it's mind-blowing. Um, but I have to admit, and I know I'm going to annoy a great many people, it wasn't as good as yesterday. Um, canyon lands and the arches, every time you stopped at one of the view places, it was different. There was something else to see and it was I can't think of other words to say than mind-blowing. Today, yes, the first time I saw the Grand Canyon, absolutely, I was blown away. It is vast. But every time you stop, then after, you're basically seeing the same thing, slightly, from a slightly different angle, but it's the same. And when you actually look at the grand map of it, you, the road that you actually get to drive around is tiny compared with the size of the place. So, saying that and also I have heard because that guy that I met yesterday with a dog which I never I never even asked his name isn't that awful but anyway um he had come and he had done the south rim and he also drove all the way around to do the north rim and it was closed no one had actually told him so that was really annoying so I'm glad he told me because I possibly would have headed for the north rim and then been really disappointed because it was closed I don't know why whatever they're doing renovations I don't know um so saying all of that if I were to come again, which I'm sure I will at some point in my life, A, I would do it either at sunrise or at sunset, because I am sure that would be, that would make the whole experience that much even better. Also, I think doing the helicopter ride would be worth doing because you were gonna to get to see so much more. I've never done that. It's something else that I would definitely like to do now that I've seen the size of it and I'm sure you'd just get to see so much more if you're in a helicopter. And also, I mean, the ideal scenario would be a helicopter ride at either sunrise or at sunset. Then you get the whole shebang.